Hello, um, welcome back. In this video, I just wanted to have a chat about my school days, my junior school and my secondary school and college. Um, when I was at junior school, I've got fond memories of junior school. Um, I suppose because there wasn't a lot of pressure put on you at junior school. Pretty much my school was a sort of um, relatively small village school and it was very pleasant. It was kind of, you know, almost idyllic really. I used to walk to school every day and back with my mum. Um, but looking back, with my autistic tinted glasses on now, I can see that there were definitely signs uh, when I was younger that I had autism. Um, so I was at junior school in the 70s. Now, no one knew anything about autism at all. Asperger's hadn't even been, um, it wasn't even a thing. So unless you had outward, outward, outwardly visible signs of learning difficulty or behaviour difficulties, which was how the majority of autism cases were diagnosed and spotted when you were younger, you know, no one, no one, no one had made the connection yet that you could still be on a, the autism spectrum without those traits. So. Our overriding memories of junior school were I had friends, not a lot of friends. I always was on the peripheries of groups or cliques. I would try and insert myself into them. I can remember looking back now, unsuccessfully sort of trying to be part of other people's clique. Um, I had a couple of close friends. I was quite controlling, I suppose. If I want, if I was playing a game, I wanted to be in control of that game. I wanted it to be played on my term, by my rules, and I didn't suffer people not playing by the rules. And if you couldn't play by the rules, I didn't want to play with you. And I remember that a lot. I remember the injustice of it, and that's something that's carried on in my life, in the, in, the injustice of not following the rules. I always follow the rules. Um, I wish life had rules that, you know, or a manual. So, what else at uh, um, junior school do I remember? Um, I don't... All I remember is I enjoyed it. I, I remember I, there was a massive step up and change for me when I went to senior school. Now, by the time I left junior school, um, I was starting to show um, some autistic traits. I, I did spend a lot of time on my own I didn't go out after school, um, school holidays. I had to be dragged out of that house, out of my bedroom. I would spend days in my bedroom on my own, happily in my own company. Um, I started to get some obsessions when I was at school, collecting stamps, collecting matchboxes. Um, I would obsess about those things. Um, I would be obsessed about building Lego and Meccano models. I would do that the whole of the school holidays, non-stop from morning to night. I'd only come out of my bedroom for dinner. So yeah, there was a few signs there. But yeah, I, by the time I left junior school, I think my differences weren't a problem. Um, it wasn't until I went to secondary school that those differences started to become more apparent and as in the nature of most people those differences are then 
preyed upon there you're ridiculed for those differences and you start to become a bit of an introvert and all I my overriding memory of secondary school was trying to be invisible hating every minute of it pretty much and try and stay out of attention out of people's way um, because my differences were starting to attract attention Um, behaviour you know just being quiet or being a little bit nerdy Um, I didn't have any close friends Uh, certainly no one that I would call a best friend I had I would hang around on the peripheries again of certain groups that were probably themselves on the at the um, what do they call them like the outcasts of the cliques you know they couldn't quite join the other cliques or be in their their group so that you know us nerds sort of formed the little um, involuntary group and one of the things that got me through secondary school was dinner time now dinner time um, there was a thing called Dungeons and Dragons Club now for those of you that don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is it's a role playing fantasy game that is set in a fantasy world full of dragons and wizards and magicians and, and lots of scary monsters and it's all made of it's all make believe but but there is a rule book about how this world works now Dungeons and Dragons was amazing escapism for me and I've since found out it's so many people with Asperger's have been into Dungeons and Dragons at some point in their life and when I sat down and analysed that myself the other day, I did put that down to the fact that here was a world, escapism, you could get away from the, the pressures of the life you didn't fit in, and you could go into this world where you was on equal terms with other people, and you probably even had an advantage over them because you could remember rules, you could play the game by the rules, you could manipulate the rules without breaking them, to your advantage and yeah I love Dungeons and Dragons I loved everything about it Um, and that was my first true obsession and at dinner times at school we were allowed to go in early for dinner to get to the front of the dinner queue so we could go to our Dungeons and Dragons club and um, that's the best thing I can say about secondary school academically I did okay Um, when I left secondary school with average O levels, I actually went and took a Mensa test. And I mean a proper Mensa test where you go and sit down and it is run by the Mensa Society and you, it's done under exam conditions. And I got an IQ of 141, which wasn't quite enough to get me into Mensa, but was like borderline genius blow my own trumpet there a bit so I had a very high IQ but I left school with um, average qualifications and I put that down to the style of teaching I was getting disengaged very early on when I was at secondary school Um, I wasn't being taught in a a way that I could connect with um, the subjects I excelled at were things like art and design which I got straight A's in Um, I did well in physics I liked chemistry I was okay at maths didn't like English so yeah I left school glad it was over to be honest with you because by the time I left there I was really struggling to fit in I was that awkward kid, you know, I didn't get invited out with anyone to any parties or anything. Um, 
And although at the time I desperately wanted to be part of all of that, it didn't bother me that much, you know. I didn't think I was missing out on a whole world that everybody else was enjoying. But it did make it awkward um, to make friends. And by the time I left school, obviously, um, there was a decision, well, what am I going to do? What did I want to do? I didn't know what I wanted to do when I left school. Um, I eventually got a job in the print industry for a family contact that got me an interview. And I did an apprenticeship in um, printing. Only because I didn't know what else to do. So, yeah, school. School was a tough one. junior school I liked, secondary school I didn't get on with and as part of my city and guilds um, in printing I had to go to college on block release and that was that was horrible because now I wasn't I wasn't fashionable um, I wasn't charismatic um, I drive a motorbike I didn't want a car um, I liked heavy rock music and everyone else was into soul and pop. So now the differences are like slapping you in the face every minute of the day. And that was really hard because I was proper ostracised at college. Nobody would talk to me at college and I mean nobody. I aced everything in my classes and that made people hate me even more. Um, and. I was pretty glad that was all finished at the end of it. So yeah, school wasn't the best thing in my life. Um, so thanks for listening to that little bit, and um, I'll see you in the next video.